I'm delighted to be catching up with Stephen Hodgson today. Stephen lives near Swindon, but we actually first met in Upper West Ghana uh, because we both were supporting um, an amazing charity out there called Action Through Enterprise that's based locally here um, in Ramsbury. But Stephen, you have gone on in the last three or four years to create the most amazing sustainable business to support the community in Ghana. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, I mean, we, I started going to, to Ghana in 2009. And then after we started going up to Upper West, which is where we, we met, as you say, um, the charity was doing an amazing work. And I always saw that the next stage from what the charity is doing is to try and encourage economic development to export products to bring income into the area rather than relying on the local economy. Um, and we, we tried for quite some time to find various ideas of what we could, could do. And what we've ended up with to start with is producing handmade soap um, because primarily because shea butter is a very um, um, common ingredient which is produced in the Upper West of Ghana. It's renowned, renowned for producing shea butter, which is um, well known for its high moisturising contents and, and, and things like that. So we thought there was an ideal fit to, to use local, local ingredients to create a product which we could then export and sell in the UK to, to put income back into Upper West Ghana. So shea butter is one of these kind of luxury ingredients that you see used on a lot of products, don't you? Whether it's soap or hand cream or moisturiser or suntan lotion, but without really understanding where it comes from. So the shea tree in, in this part of Africa is one of the most important um, habitats vegetation because it's a native to the area and it's it's designed to withstand drought is, is my understanding and these trees last they 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 live for a really long time but they take a long time to come to maturity before they actually start to fruit i mean presumably their roots have got to go down a really long way to find the moisture that they need um in that quite harsh environment yeah, they, they are well suited to the environment. They are capable of um, um, surviving through the dry periods as well as obviously in the wet season. Um, but yeah, you're quite right. They take about 15 years before they start producing the kernels, the, the nuts, the fruit that creates the uh, nuts. Um, but they can live up to 100 or 200 years. So once, once they're established, they're actually um, quite a significant part of the, of the landscape. And, and this, this is quite harsh um, territory. I mean, we both know from having been there. I, I've only been there in the dry season, um, but it, it goes from being very, very dry with no rainfall to having, um, I mean, they're in floods now, aren't they? I mean, there's a big river nearby and then I think the dams are broken. So all these poor subsistence farmers, all their, all their crops have been flooded. Um, so these, these, subsistence farmers are either having to really struggle to find water to grow crops in the dry season or they're having their crops flooded in the wet season so starvation is is a reality for these people and shear trees are one of the few um, uh, resources they've got that is actually designed you know it's a natural you know it's designed for that environment it's that sort of nature um, provided them with um, but there is a real threat to the trees, isn't there? Because they also happen to be an incredibly good source of charcoal. So a lot of them are being cut down, which is kind of heartbreaking on a global scale. And I think they're realizing, they know that this isn't great for climate change and for their own environment. And they're finding that the more trees that are chopped down, the more insects come into their homes. But if you can, if you can, earn a lot of money today by charcoal by chopping down a tree you, you're going to do that rather than waiting you know for a few years to get a revenue from shear butter so so how how does your business fit into this equation yeah i think one of the things that you notice when when you visit this part of ghana is people basically live day by day if if you are wanting to feed your family because it's very much a subsistence existence where you you try and generate income to buy food for the day um if if by 
by cutting down a tree to get some charcoal, you can do it to support your family. You're going to do it. So um, the, the solution has to be one where the, the locals are incentivized to actually protect the trees because it's an, they're making immediate decisions. They're not looking long term because they need to survive. Um, so although the government can put in legislation to make it illegal to take trees down and things like that, um, what, what we, we were thinking was actually the, the best way to do this is to make the sheer nuts valuable. Mm. I mean, that government yeah. legislation is hard to enforce. Yes. Isn't it? Yes, yeah. absolutely. You, you see that all, all, all across um, Ghana, that it's very difficult to enforce legislation on the ground. Um, so if one of, one of the things I, I said a few weeks ago in one of the little videos I did was what we want to do is to make the sheer tree more valuable for its nuts than for the wood yeah. um, and the only way to do that is to um, pay a fair price for the shear butter so that it becomes you're more incentivized to generate shear butter than, than you are to cut the trees down to make charcoal so the, the shear butter becomes more valuable um, and Can we also say at this point that the harvesting of the nuts and making the butter is traditionally a woman's work. Yeah, and yeah. I'm guessing the charcoal making is probably a man's work. Yes. So the fewer trees there are, the less income earning opportunity there are for the women in the community. And a lot of them end up having to travel hundreds and hundreds of miles to go to big cities like Accra to work as, as porters, luggage porters, carrying things and living yeah. in a terrible city far, far away from their families and goodness knows yeah. what abuse they have to put up with. So um, it's wonderful that what you're doing is actually providing them safe employment in their hometown. That, that, that's our vision. Um, so we, we've just bought um, 100 kilograms of shear butter um, direct from the market in Laura and had it shipped over to the UK. Wonderful um, market. This is the one where the goats go through. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's this yeah. herd of goats who just do what they want. They go through the town and. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's another world, isn't it? Um, but um, so we, we were buying the shea butter at the market directly from the producers and we were paying. Um, the producers £1.15 for a kilo of shea butter. Obviously, then we have to transport it and ship it over to the UK and pay all the import duties and things like that. But our, we have a friend in Accra who has a shipping brokerage company, and he was saying in Accra, you can buy the shea butter for 95 pence. So we were paying £1.15, which is what the shea producers were asking for, and it wasn't inflated because of it was a Western client because they didn't know that. It was a local, local guy, uh, law, uh, gentleman from Laura who was buying the shea butter. Um, so that was the market price, £1.15 a kilo. Um, so if, if the wholesaler in Accra is, paying, is charging 95p, then his purchase price must be significantly less to, to make his business viable. So potentially what's happening is the shear producers, if they're selling their shear butter to wholesalers, they're possibly having to sell it at half what they would normally charge. Mm -hmm. So you're suppressing and reinforcing the, the, the issues of poverty. And, and in, in the end of the day, the difference between 95p a kilo and £1.15 a kilo for us producing the soap is about two pence on a bar of soap. Yeah. So, so we're paying the market rate because in reality, it doesn't make a big difference to our end product, but it makes a huge difference to the producers because, like I said at the start, it, it starts to make the shear butter become recognised as a valuable resource. Yeah. Um, and therefore, hopefully, makes the shear trees more valuable to keep as a, as a tree producing nuts. Yeah, oh, it makes so much sense. Um, and I, I guess that huge companies like, companies like The Body Shop I think they get their shea butter maybe over the border from Burkina Faso, but well, goodness knows what they pay for it. There's, there's a body shop bar of soap okay. called Shea. It says there that they get their shea butter from Tamale, which is, which is halfway up to Laura. Um, but actually, when you look at the ingredients in that bar of soap, there's less than 2% shea butter. 
it's below the fragrances and the fragrances shouldn't be more than about one and a half percent of the bar content in the listing yeah so, so a lot of companies are referring to sheer soap but it's a token ingredient that's whereas, interesting isn't it yeah yeah so so and so whereas in our bars of soap which we're making 50 percent of that soap is sheer butter blimey um so so not, the, not only have you paid fair trade price for your sheer butter but you're including more of it so you're pro you're producing a higher quality product for the consumer we'd like to think so we'd like we're, we're referring to it as a luxury soap bar um because we we are using natural raw ingredients and like i say we've started using the the sheer butter that we've literally taken delivery of from laura do you have the, some you could show us so the, the sheer butter yeah that's okay. um so it looks like ice cream Looks like yeah. little... that look that is completely different to the sheer butter that we've been buying from the wholesalers in the UK, which is also sourced from West Africa. Um, and when I, when I um, opened the container with the sheer butter from Laura and took some of the sheer butter out, I was absolutely amazed at the difference. And um, it's so much. It seems to have so much more to it. Um, and the only way I can describe it is it's is as if this shear butter is like wholemeal bread and the other shear butter we've been using is like white bread okay yeah and even when we make the soap you can tell there's more in the shear butter than is in the um wholesale shear butter so that it's far more natural and, and like i say it's it's we bought it direct from the producers so it's a fair trade. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what it takes to get the fair trade stamp, but it sounds like you are very much a fair trade ethos company, and that's why you're doing it. You didn't, you didn't wake up one morning and say you wanted to start making no, soap. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to do this for me. We're, we're, we're not making any, literally we're not making any money. We're putting money into this, and it's, the vision is never for us to earn a living from it. It is to create a living for, for people who struggle to live. Um, so so yeah it's we can't call it fair trade because it's obviously an official label you have to put on it in the same way that um when we we engaged a branding strategist to help us with the product she said well is this sheer butter organic and we said well it is because it's from the bush but it's not certified because the soil isn't certified organic and so her recommendation to us was we should call it wild harvested because it is from the bush um, it's not farmed in a in a uh, um, like a plantation or something like that. Like that, but I think when you like I say when you see the product, you can you tell immediately that it's 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 uh, a uh, a wild produced natural product. The the raw the raw butter itself. Yes. Um, so so the, the 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 women primarily in Laura they go out they harvest the nuts. And yeah. then they process them into butter in Laura, and then that's the butter that they send to you. That's right. Yes. Um, so they they um, roast the nuts to start with, then they beat them to get the kernels out, and then they add water to mix them down to a paste, and then they reboil it to to get the butter off the surface. Um, but ironically, it takes three kilograms of charcoal to create one kilogram of sheer butter so you've got a a circle of destruction in a sense because you're using you're having to use a lot of charcoal which you have to get from the trees to create the sheer butter so it's very difficult to make that sustainable um, so you'd have to look at things like making the burning far more efficient so you knew you're not using as much charcoal or using alternative fuel source which may be more sustainable um, Plus, also, you have to look at the idea of um, um, planting more trees, because if if you have to have the trees to to create the charcoal, you have to reinst reinstate the tree supply. Um, and um, one of the biggest um, influences on me at the moment is is um, from a book that Paul Palman produced called Net Positive. Um, Paul Palman used to be the CEO of Unilever, which um, ironically started its life as a soap producer with the life boy soap brand um, and his main mantra is you should give more than you take 
and the idea that we're not looking to just reduce how much we're taking, but we're trying to get to a point where actually we create more. Mm. Mm. So it's not just a case of replenishing the trees, but it'd be a question ultimately, the, game, the aim would be to actually end, end up, up with more trees. End up with more trees so, than you currently yeah. have there. Yeah, so the net oh. positive idea. Yeah, so that would be fantastic if, if your enterprise could generate a tree planting programme Exactly. Those are some of the thoughts I've been having over the past uh, few days about actually maybe on the back of what we're doing, we could actually reinvest some funding to try and stimulate more tree planting or something like that. I, I, I don't know. They're just ideas at the moment. But yeah. Yeah. So so your your day job. Am I right? You're an architect or a surveyor? Structural engineer. Structural engineer. Forgive me. Yeah. Um, but you have learned how to make soap <laughs> yeah. and you have a now a production line at home at making... the moment but I, I don't want to be a soap maker <laughs> I, my, that isn't that isn't my calling and um i'm like i say i'm my aim our our vision is to establish soap production in laura so okay. they're not they're not just selling a raw product, but they're actually producing a, a product. So you're enhancing the, the value of, the, of, the, of, the, of what they're doing. Um, that's, that's our aim. We, we want to get to a point where we can actually establish soap production in Laura. That would be amazing. And I'm guessing that there isn't anything existing like this, at least not in the north of Ghana. No, I mean, people, pe local people make soap because they make soap but it's a very basic type of soap and obviously we're, we're wanting to my, my the idea is that i will actually go out there as soon as soon as we can once we're confident that we're ready to, to do this um and actually identify people who we can train up to produce the soap on on our behalf because because in order to, to to do the soap we've had to get it test uh, certified as okay. safe for use on on, on skin so we've had to submit documentation and, 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 and obtain certification that it's, it's okay to sell this product. So to transfer that to Laura, You'd have we to will get have certified to make sure again. that that is, that is um, um, instigated in, in Laura as well. So quality control okay. and, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's not, a, not straightforward, but that's, that's where okay. we're looking to, to, to aim. So they can make more, what you, the, the idea is that with your support and infrastructure and equipment and training, that they can actually earn more money making a product that's basically for export. I mean, it Absolutely. could be sold in other parts of Ghana, yeah. but it's a more, it's, it's a higher value item, if you like, than the yeah. soap that they've traditionally made for them, yes. for their own community. Yes, yeah, that's, it. it's a, that's exactly what we're looking to, to get to. So you've got moulds and different ingredients. I mean, how, how much space and equipment do you need to make soap? I don't know much about the process. At, at the moment, not a huge amount of space um, because we're not producing hundreds of bars every day. Um, at the moment, I can probably produce 60 bars in a day, maybe 80 bars in a day. Um, we're looking to maybe change it slightly to make it more... Um, a simpler process again with a view to transferring it to Ghana to make it more more um, possible to be consistent with the with the product um, but um, it, it doesn't take a huge amount of space um, it just takes a lot of time um, to to produce the soap um, which is another reason why I don't want to do it. I can't earn it I couldn't earn a living doing this and, that, and and that's not my intention my intention is to facilitate others others to to earn so they can live and like i say you know um my understanding is the average income in the north of ghana is about a dollar dollar fifty a day um now if you can make if you can make 50 to 100 bars of soap we can we can exceed that um pay level to the people who are producing soap so immediately you're you're bringing economic benefit not only to individuals but also then subsequently to the community because they have more money to be able to spend. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's amazing. And can you, do you want to tell us a little bit about the branding and what, you've, what, it, what the soap's called and why you chose that name? Okay, that, that took quite a long time. Like, like I say, we engaged a branding strategist we thought is important right at the outset to, to get an idea of what this product, what it is, we, who we are, what we are. Um, and... Um, 
core to what we're doing is the people in Laura. And so Abby, the strategist who helped us, said an idea would be to recognise the significance that they play in this. And so the, we've, we've adopted the name for, this, for our brand of Agare, which is A-G-A-R-E, with an acute accent on the E. And that's derived from the language that the people speak in Laura, which is Dagare. Um, and so Abby suggested we drop the D because Dagare sounds a bit hard, um, which is why we've ended up with Agare, because it's, it's a softer sound, so it sort of fits nicely with um, the idea of a luxury soap. It's about um, looking after yourself, treating yourself, but knowing in the background that when you buy the product to treat yourself or to treat others with, you're also um, looking after other people by giving them an income to have a life. Yeah, it's a win-win, isn't it? Do you, do, we, you have like some, do you have some bars of soap you can show us? Yeah, um, so there's, uh, the, I don't know if you can see the branding on there at all. It's, okay, yeah, so we're looking at an oval white bar. Yeah. So, and, that, and you've got different colours, does that mean different yeah. scents? Yeah, we, we have six fragrances, um, my, primarily because when we su submitted the um, um, ingredients for testing, we were allowed six variations. So we thought, okay, we'll go for six, six fragrances. Um, so we have cedarwood, we have coconut, we have lavender, lemongrass, rosemary, and then we decided to have another one which actually has no additives at all, which we've referred to as pure. And then that, it, all that um, includes is a, the shea butter, coconut oil and groundnut oil. Um, again, we, source, we, we chose those three oils and butters because they are available in Ghana, they're sourced in Ghana. Um, again, we wanted it to be sustainable from a Ghanaian point of view. Um, we deliberately veered away from using palm oil um, yeah. because although a lot of the palm oil in the north of Ghana is again wild harvested, it has so many connotations. We didn't want to have to justify the fact that we're using palm oil if we used it, um, which, so that's why we chose the ground, that's the peanut oil, um, again, because that's grown um, uh, locally as well. Um, so, so yes, we, um, we've got the six fragrances and the, the most, the, the, by far the favourite fragrances are the lavender and the lemongrass. Okay. Um, we, we were surprised that in, of all of them, the pure bar doesn't seem very, very popular. Um, but um, that may be because of the, 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 the reach that we've had so far. Mm. Um, and if we went to, if we reached out to um, maybe people who are far more concerned about additives and things like that, then, um, then there'd be more demand for the pure. But I mean, having, having said that, the additives are um, just naturally um, sourced essential oils and, and, and colours. So um, there's, uh, there, is, there is natural and, and um, uh, uh, well made as we can. Yeah, I mean, to have soap that's just got oil in it, I think, why, why is it soap? Why it sounds like moisturiser, but it has a still, has the, does it froth like a normal? Yeah, yeah, it, it lathers, it, it lathers, it lathers. because when making soap, you, the soap is produced by adding the, the lye, which is basically caustic soda. You add that to the oils and butters, and dependent on which oils and butters you use, influences the proportion of the caustic soda to the oil because what you're trying to do is convert all of the oils um, to soap with a little bit of residual what they call super fat so you don't end up with any core any lye left over as a surplus product it's all converted to soap with a little bit of this what they call a super fat left at the end Oh, okay. Um, so that's the chemical process. Of, yes. So the lye is just a catalyst to make that, the. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, but I have to wear gloves and stuff when I'm making it because of the caustic soda. But um, once it's, it takes you. You meant to allow thirty days for it to cure, Sorry. to convert into a soap that's that you can use. Um, so if if we've run out of stock and somebody wants them, 
they'd have to wait 30 days before Gosh. they could use it. But um, we're trying to keep ahead of the man. So, so and, and presumably this is how all soap is made with the yes. caustic soda and fat. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's all, the majority as far as I'm aware, that's how, that's, that's how it's basically made. And there may be other ways, I don't know, but the main, the main way that everybody makes soap is, is using oils and butters with the caustic soda. Okay. Fascinating. And 30 yeah. days, blimey. So you do need a room, you need a drying rack or a place for it. Yeah. Yeah. They, I, I put them on our, on the floor on, on, um, in, in the trays to start with. And then I take them out and put them on, on towels. Um, and just let them air dry. Um, but the 30 day thing is quite useful because if we do get to produce it in Ghana, like we're hoping to, um, it would take 30 days to get it shipped over to the UK um, because we'll be using sea freight because it's far more carbon friendly. Um, I mean, I worked out that for one of the soap bars to send it by sea would create um, six grams of carbon CO2 but to send it by air, by air would be 260 grams. So it's, although people think sea freight is a, a, um, a problem with regards to carbon footprint, because the, sea, the, the freight can carry so much more per weight, it is far, far more carbon friendly than, than air freight. Um, so, but that fits nicely, like I say, with the 30 day curing period. So it means, you know, once the soap bars are made in, in Ghana and shipped over to here, by the time we get them, they'll be ready to sell. Oh, so they can cure in transit? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Oh, well, that's, that's great. So you just have to get them down from Laura down to Accra, which, yeah. um, as we know, is a very bumpy bus ride. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. It's an overnight bus ride. We, we, the, the sheer butter that we had delivered... Um, I have video footage of it being loaded onto the bus in uh, in containers. Um, and it was quite surreal when those exact same containers arrived in our drive. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. saw we saw them being carried through the market in Laura on the ladies' heads. Um, so to see those exact containers yeah. come from Laura Market to to Highworth on it's our drive, amazing, is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, Stephen, how can people buy the soap? Okay, so um, what we've done, we, we have a Facebook page and an Instagram page, which is um, basically at Agari Shea, A-G-A-R-E-S-H-E-A. -E -E so you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And the easiest way is to go via the Facebook page where we have a shop page. And if you click on the shop page on our Facebook account, it will take you directly to our Etsy page where you can buy the product. It's either a single bars or we do multiple bars in gift boxes, which obviously are cheaper than single bars. Um, so we've got all the six, six fragrances listed as individual bars. And then we've got a series of different types of gift box, boxes as well, where you then just need to tell us which scent, which fragrances you want in the gift box. Um, oh, okay, so you can choose which goes in. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we've given a, a very a very range of um, different type of options for you, but um, but yes, the easiest way to get to our Etsy shop is to go through our Facebook page, and obviously then you can can like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and see see what we're doing. Yeah, brilliant. Well, it's it's so exciting, and I hope you feel um, all your efforts and money and time that you've invested into this project are uh, starting to bear fruit. Are you excited? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're starting to see things, um, developing a little bit more. It's, it's more to, it's the, the main thing we need to achieve is to get sustainable ongoing sales in the UK. Once we've, once we've got that, then we can actually get out to Laura and, and get this set up and, and, if we can get established in Laura, then this whole thing is scalable mm. because, because people in Laura will be, will be looking to be able to join and, and help produce the soap because it, it's, it's, uh, it's in their economic, for their economic benefit and they, and they will buy into it. They're so hardworking. One, one of the things we've noticed, as I'm sure you did when you go to Laura is all the people are looking for is an opportunity to improve their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite staggering that it can literally just be to to 
give their kids some clothes so they can go to school, mm. school, school uniform, or to, to buy food for the kids every day. It's as fundamental as that. And um, to be able to do a little bit of something, as far as we're concerned, to make a huge difference in even one family's life, um, it's got to be worth it. Absolutely. We have no idea what living survival you know, just having to survive what it, what it must feel like and um, whatever little we can do by buying something that will make our lives smile, you know, make us smile. Yeah. It's a lovely product. It's not like you're asking for charity. You're giving something back, yeah. isn't it? Exactly. You, you, it, it's about enabling people to, to, to improve their own prospects. Mm. But what I'm saying in this in this country, you're not asking just for charity, you know, donations to a charity. No. You're selling something that they want and that they'll they'll value themselves. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully, one of the ideas was soap is tends to be a repeat business. <laughs> you use it, you run out of it. <laughs> people tend to use soap and then need another bar of soap. So our <laughs> Our sort of one of our sort of um, thoughts was actually this is not not just a one-off purchase. It's uh, repeating, repeating repeat people. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. yeah, yeah. Um, and so obviously we're talking in November and it's coming up to Christmas and we've just had COP twenty six and so everybody's more globally aware and aware of the issues. So hopefully you know, this will be a no-brainer in terms of choices people can make for their Christmas presents. Well, it, it, it makes an easy choice in some ways with the number of, number of people that have bought the gift boxes because, A, because they like what we're doing, and B, because it, it gives a nice gift that has got something with it, a story behind it, which um, um, is obviously a positive, positive thing. Absolutely. I mean... We, there is so much consumer, I mean, we have so much choices these days and how you spend your money as a, as a consumer, um, it makes you feel good or bad. You know, I get yeah. a real buzz out of, you know, choosing a product that I think, you know, is the, is the, right, the right choice to make. Yes, yes. And even, even for us just buying that shea butter from the market in Laura, we, like I say, we paid £115. But well, if you bear in mind that the average income is about a pound a day, that's mm. the equivalent of, of sort of three, four months income for somebody. Yeah, no, amazing. Well done, Stephen. And um, hopefully it won't be too long before you're back in Laura. I mean, with COVID and everything, it's travel has been difficult, but yeah. Um, yeah. are you hoping to go back next year? I, ideally, yes. I mean, if. Um, I think our initial plans are hopefully, hopefully to go over in February. Um, but um, we tr uh, the advice generally is to avoid the summer because it's hot and wet, and um, not only is it humid, but all the um, all these snakes and scorpions and things come out. So you tend you tend to avoid the summer. So um, it'll either be February time next year or this time next year. But it, it depends on how this, this whole... How many um, bars of soap you've sold. So you sold. <laughs> so you need to sell as many bars of soap as we can, to, not to finance us to go, but to, to, to make it apparent that we actually have something that, that's got mm -hmm. legs and we can, we can get this established and, and, and running in, in, in Laura. Lovely. Well, well done. Just, could you just repeat your name of your Facebook page just one last time? It, it's at Agare, A-G-A-R-E. E Shia S H E A, all one word. Agare Shia. Okay, okay, lovely. Well, I'm looking forward to trying the soap myself. So I, I will. We'll get to you. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much for all your right. time, Stephen, and well done on this amazing enterprise. Thanks so much, Penny.